Good morning and welcome to morning prayers this morning. Uh, it's good to be able to just be still and present ourselves before the Lord and uh, set the day before him and imagine him in our day so that we can go forward and make a difference in terms of the kingdom. So I'm just going to invite you to be still and let's focus on the fact that God is present with us right now and um, let's be present to him. I'm going to use a form of liturgy um, from uh, one of the Natia uh, prayer books that we go through each morning in our prayers here in the cathedral. The Lord's peace be with you this morning. In the time when the judges led Israel, there was a famine in the land. Naomi of Bethlehem, her husband and their two sons left in search of better fortunes in Moab. When they got to Moab, Naomi's husband died. Her sons took Moabite wives, Orpah and Ruth. They lived in Moab for the next 10 years, but then Naomi's sons died. In her grief, Naomi set off for home, asking Orpah and Ruth to stay where they belonged in Moab. Eventually Orpah left Naomi, but Ruth was determined saying, don't force me to leave you and turn back. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die and there I will be buried. May the Lord punish me severely if I allow anything but death to separate us. When Naomi saw that Ruth had her heart set on going with her, she gave in. Nurturing God, When life falls apart around us, give us the courage to be faithful to our friends. Now there's a reading from the New Testament that I'm going to bring to you. So let's just listen to what the Spirit wants to say to us this morning as I read. And this is taken from Luke's Gospel, chapter 21 and beginning at verse 20. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation has come near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains and let those who are inside the city depart and let not those who are out in the country enter it. For these are days of vengeance to fulfill all that is written. Alas, for women who are pregnant and for those who are nursing infants in those days, for there will be great distress upon the earth and wrath against his people. They will fall by the edge of the sword and be led captive among all nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled underfoot by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. And there will be signs in sun and moon and stars and on the earth distress of nations in perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves, people fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken, and then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud of power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. I think for most of us, when we read those kind of accounts, instead of our heads straightening up and lifting up our heads, we, um, we're filled with foreboding. We look around at the world around us and the heaviness that there is. But the answer to the future and the hope to the future lies in the God who we trust. And therefore, when we pray, we can come trusting him and knowing that the future lies in his hands. So let's do that as we commit our day to him in the examen. Let's trust him for the day and trust him for our future days as well. So let's be still as we come. If you know the responses in the examen, because we use them 
many days in our daily prayers, and please feel free to join in. Today is a fresh day. It is a good day because you have made it. Therefore, it is full of possibilities and hope. Jesus, you are our source. Help us to live the day with you in the centre. You call us together as your body. Help us to share the day well with others. Yours is a revolution of love. Help us to share good news with the last, the lost and the least. Amen. Now is an opportunity for us to bring our own prayers to God. And we'll start wide and then go narrow. So we'll start with the world. And then we'll work our way down to any prayers or concerns that we want to bring to the Lord today. So let's just think of the nations and situations in the world at the moment. I think, for example, of a peaceful transition in America. Because what happens in America impacts the rest of the world, of course. So let's pray for that. And then we can think of countries in crisis like Ethiopia and pray for peace and reconciliation there. And then there's also the COVID-19 virus and the race to get the vaccines out. But we want to pray for equality in the distribution of the vaccines so that it doesn't just go to those who have the money and the wealth, but actually those who really need it. So I'm going to ask us that we be still and maybe as you're praying, bring some of those things to mind in this moment of quiet. And then I'll draw that to a close with a short prayer. So let's pray and hold those before God now. Lord, we do pray for peace and justice to prevail. We pray for peace in peaceful transitions with government. We pray for justice and equality and care and concern, particularly for the broken and the downtrodden. And in the distribution of a virus that needs to go to the most vulnerable. We pray for wise leadership and merciful leadership in this season. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now let's pray for our own neighbourhoods. Wherever you live, just think about the places around your neighbourhood, the meeting points, the um, the place where people live, maybe just the, in, along your street, the people that you know who live there and the situations they're going through. Let's pray for... Uh, a real sense of community and for healing in those communities too. And um, yeah, let's, as we're encouraged to pray for the peace of the city in which we live, we pray for peace in Wellington. So let's be still and hold those things up before God right now. Lord, we lift our neighbours and our community into your hands. We pray for your blessing and your peace to rest on those communities, that you may be glorified in them, and that those in our neighbourhood may come to know the love of Christ as we do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we've already reflected on the, the last, the lost and the least, but let's just for a moment hold up those situations in the world where people are broken. They're in 
uh, serious poverty, or they find themselves caught on borders longing for asylum and freedom. And those caught up in slavery through people trafficking or manipulation of whatever kind. Let's hold those and pray that the chains would be broken and people would find freedom and hope. So let's hold those up before God right now. And Lord God, we do pray for those who are caught up in people trafficking. For those who instigate it, we pray for repentance and a breaking of that cycle. For those who are caught up in it and trapped and find no freedom, that the chains will be broken and they would find freedom and life. We pray for healing of memories. We pray also for those who are homeless on the street or wherever they are, if they've run away or they've just, life has fallen apart for them, we hold them up before you and we pray for those who are working to try and help alleviate their suffering and struggle. And help us also to reach out as neighbours and as people that reflect the character of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And then we pray for ourselves, for yourself. So just imagine at the moment and reflect on the things that are going on in your life. Those things that you're struggling with, perhaps the people that you're anxious about, or something that maybe that you want to give thanks for. Well, here's a great opportunity to do it. So I'm just going to allow a time of quiet, and you can do that silently or speak out loud, but bring those prayers and those thanksgivings to God in this moment now. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you hear our prayers. We thank you for the answers to prayer that we have received. And we thank you that we can come to you. And we lift each of these needs and concerns to you and these thanksgivings too. And we pray that you would bless and answer and draw us into a deeper relationship with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now, please feel free to join with me in saying together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Come to me, says Jesus, all who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Come away with me and you'll recover your life. Walk with me and work with me. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Abide in my love. Let my joy be in you and may your joy be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends says Jesus, if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer. Now you are my friends. Brother Jesus, as we enter this new day, help us to trust in your friendship. The Spirit of God dwells in us. Thanks be to God. Thanks very much for joining us for prayers today. Please feel free to take uh, longer and reflect on the passage again, which was Luke 21 and verse 20, or bring any other prayers that you might have before God. But otherwise, 
Hope you have a good day today and we'll see you at the weekend. The Lord bless you today. Thank you. Bye.